Hello, A.G. Wright 8th graders. My name is Mrs. Ashby. I'm the librarian at Shirley High Middle School. You might not have heard this yet, but your librarian, Mrs. Witt, retired before school began this year. I know that last year you probably heard about Cafe Book from Mrs. Witt, but now that she's gone, she won't be there to run it, but because it's COVID times, we're going to run a virtual Cafe Book, and I wanted to talk to you about it in case you want to join. So just listen carefully. You might have heard this last year or you might not even remember about it from last year. So we're gonna go over a bunch of stuff about it. So Cafe Book is a program. Normally we meet at lunchtime. That's obviously not going to be the case this year because we're not in school for that. So we meet at lunchtime and we discuss books, that's it. There are a bunch of books on the program. We ask that you try and read some of them, but there's not grades, there's not assignments, there's not projects associated with it. It's just for fun. It's just reading the books and discussing the books. We will be meeting on Tuesday mornings from 9.15 to 9.45. It's about every other week. Those are the dates there. You'll find them on a web page on your school website too, on your school library site. We will talk about the books there, and then there's also going to be a Google Classroom so you can discuss with people on there as well. The um, meetings, we talk about what we liked, what we didn't like. You don't have to like them all by any means, and it's just fun to discuss. So these are the books that are on the list this year. There are 16 every year. These books are chosen by school librarians and public librarians because we work with the librarians at Central Rappahannock Regional Library. And it's also it also contains members who were in Cafe Book last year. So some teenagers who know about Cafe Book, they help to choose the books too. So all of these books have been published in the last year. So they're the newest, latest, greatest books for young adults. And you'll hear about all of them eventually, but I'm just gonna tell you about three, just so you get an idea of what kinds of books are on the list this year. So here's the first one, How We Became Wicked. So How We Became Wicked takes place in a world where there is a huge virus that has killed off a lot of the population. We picked this book before COVID, by the way. But in this case, the virus is spread by mosquitoes. So they're, they're not exactly mosquitoes, they're bigger than mosquitoes, they're kind of silvery, but then we call them singers. And if you get stung by a singer, then you get this disease that turns you wicked. Now you can't tell the wicked easily. The wicked look like everybody else, sometimes they sound like everybody else, but eventually they'll say things like, I can't wait to see what you'll look like without your skin, and they end up killing people. So our main character, Astrid, she lives in a town that has been protected by her grandfather. He saw what was coming and he built this town and they covered it with a, a huge dome so no mosquitoes can get in or out, no singers can get in or out. And if they leave, they put on like bee suits so they're protected from the singers. Astrid doesn't have to do this because when she was a baby, some people thought that maybe if you put babies outside at a certain age and let them get stung, then they would be immune. And it actually worked for Astrid. She was not affected by the singers. She doesn't get sick at all, but it didn't work for most of the babies they tried this with. Most of them got the disease and died. So Astrid is safe. Nobody else in town is. As the book begins, there's an island nearby their town, and the island has a lighthouse on it that lights up for the first time ever that Astrid can remember. And so she feels like there must be somebody over there, maybe somebody who is her own age because there aren't really, there's only one other person in town who's her same age, or maybe somebody else that they should be helping. The people, the adults in the town tell her to ignore it and that it doesn't mean anything, but she's convinced that there's somebody else over there. I have no secrets. So Gemma has cerebral palsy and be, her, manifestation of this disease is she's in a wheelchair and she cannot talk at all. Now she can think, she has no issues um, mentally, she just can't communicate at all. So she has a caretaker named Sarah and she loves Sarah. Sarah loves her, they get along really well. But Sarah has a boyfriend named Dan who um, Gemma does not like at all. Dan acts like he's really nice when Sarah's around and when other people are around. But when it's just him and Gemma, he says mean things to her. He tells her she's stupid. He tells her he wishes that his girlfriend would leave her behind and go spend time with him. 
And after a boy in town disappears, Dan confesses that he had something to do with that disappearance. So Dan is also a criminal. But Gemma can't say anything to anybody because she can't communicate. And then a little bit after that, Sarah goes out on a date with Dan and Sarah disappears. Now, in the meantime, Gemma has gotten some help, some assistive devices that allow her to spell out words a little at a time and then slowly communicate even more than that. So she's starting to be able to talk about things. And Dan finds out that she can now communicate and he's concerned about what she might tell people about what he has said in the past. And then the last one I'm gonna tell you about is They Called Us Enemy by George Takei. So George Takei was on the original Star Trek movie or TV show, so you might know him from that. He's done a lot of things since then. But this is his true story, and it's a graphic novel. You can see the picture there on the right of the of one of the pages inside the book. George Takei is Japanese-American. His parents came here from Japan, but they had lived here his entire life and for a lot of years before he was born. But at World War II, after the Japanese attacked Pearl Harbor, then the United States government felt like maybe it was that maybe Japanese Americans were working for Japan or were here as spies. And so all the Japanese Americans were rounded up and put into camps where they were held captive by the government. So this is his true story of the internment camp where he spent almost all of his childhood and all of his teen years before finally he got old enough and the government decided these people were not a threat to our country and let them go. So it's a section of United States history that you might not have heard much about because people at the time didn't think there was anything wrong with it. And yeah, now we're starting to see the problems there and starting to uh, feel like we should talk about this more. So this is George Takei's real story of his life growing up in an internment camp. All right, so those are just three of the books that are on Cafe Book this year. And I always tell my students, and I'll tell you too, that if you think you're interested, even a little bit, then sign up and give it a try. As I said, there aren't assignments, there aren't tests or anything. It's just for fun. So if you come to a meeting or two and it's not for you, it's not something you want to do, you can let us know and we will just take you off the list. There's no pressure for you. So if you go to your school's library website, so go to your school's website, Go to the library page. You'll find a form on there where you can sign up. And we will be starting on October 13th, just a couple of weeks from now. We'll send you reminders when it's time, and we look forward to having you join us.